Hey, this is Ralph. And in this video, I'm going to make a few moves on some daily games that I've got going on and then tackle a 10-minute um, uh, rapid with an opponent. So let's see. I'm going to head over to play, and I've got a bunch of... I always have a bunch of uh, daily games going on. And if you haven't played these before, I like them. Um, they do kind of... I think I've got some bad habits with the daily games. But basically, each opponent makes a move once every 24 hours, maybe once every two days, once every three days, and they've got longer controls too. And so obviously these games can last weeks, but it does take away some of that pressure. Now, the, the problem I've got with my daily games is sometimes I'll do them you know, like in the morning or in the evening, and I'm, you know, either, you know, just think of something else. I'm not giving it the concentration that it deserves. So hopefully, I haven't played any daily games. I probably did this morning, but I haven't made any moves throughout the day. It's getting near the afternoon, still at work, but I'm thinking by doing these on video, that at least kind of forces me to slow down and not make such quick moves. So in this position, the game's not too deep, four, four moves in. I still need to develop pieces. Yeah. Let's bring the bishop out. Let's see what else we got. Develop. Prepare to castle. Now this game's a little bit deeper. Move 14, and we're still balanced, but we're getting to an, an, an closer to, obviously, well into the middle game here. So if I back up a few moves, I took... Black has their pawns doubled. Pinning the knight to the queen. Oops, I clicked the wrong button. Let's go back. There we go. <clears throat> Pin the knight. They deflect. Tack the rook. So I did a little back and forth. Obviously, if I move my bishop back to g5. I think they're just going to try to block their bishop again. So that's probably not going to go anywhere. I don't think I'm ready to take their bishop, though. I think uh, I think the phrase is, you want to keep the tension. And I'd rather them take my bishop, and then I retake with a queen and get my queen up into their area, even though that may not lead, ultimately, to a good attack. Hmm. I don't want to double or undouble their pawns. However, that does open up the F file a little bit more, so I can do some work there. Hmm. My bishop over here on B5, is that doing anything to help the cause? Their bishop, I feel like, is pretty locked down. So I don't want to really mess with my D and E pawns. But obviously my bishop is kind of trapped over on this side too. And it wouldn't take long for them to start pushing me around and get me out of the mix. I'm going to get this rook out of the way. Rook. The knight. <clears throat> Maybe this knight over here on g3 is a little better served. Not sure about that one. Okay. Another game. Balanced. Getting into that middle game area. <clears throat> and as we can see, I've yet to castle. And I think I might as well go ahead and do that. 
Although, is there some opportunity for me to have this rook open? Maybe I'll castle long and see if I can't start to push my h-pawn onto this open file, semi-open file. I don't typically do a move like this, so I'm kind of curious to try it because it is atypical of what I would normally do. My first instinct was to castle short, but no, let's try it. Looks like I can start trading some pieces here. However, what I might do first see if I can't drive this one knight away. That'll leave this G knight underprotected. I've got two attackers with my bishop and queen. They currently have two defenders, so I'm going to try to get rid of one of the defenders. Where can their knight go that can still cause me issues? Can't move up. No, let's see if I do this. Can't move up. Can't take over existing square. No good here. No good there. Really no good over here. In fact, <clears throat> I take that back. If I move up here and they take their knight and move there, that might give me a little bit of concern. Only a little bit, though. Because I forgot I have my light squared bishop down here guarding that e5 square. <clears throat> so I think I will be okay. I think so. Get rid of a defender so I can attack this knight. Now I suppose if I was them though, <clears throat> I would probably ignore this attack. Move my queen right there. Because they've got a potential checkmate coming really, really soon. I can take one horse, but then they can replace that horse with another one. And I still have a potential. And then, of course, I'm going to have to really kick it into gear and push this pawn. So I think this is still a good move to scare the defender, but I think my opponent could probably ignore it for the short term. <clears throat> so this is a brand new game. It hasn't started yet. So for a lot of my daily games, they're just part of tournaments. So I don't know if you've seen these before. I'm going to play tournaments. Click OK. And they have a daily tournaments category. And, and people can just make up these tournaments. So they're, they're nothing official. There's no prizes or anything like that. But it is just a quick and easy way to get a bunch of games. Uh, daily games, for sure. So, yeah, if you see something you like, here we go. Starts in three days. Position versus material. It's for people under 2,000. That's me. I could click on this one. And choose join. <clears throat> and at some point in the future, I'm, that tournament is going to start, and I'm going to see how I'll get a whole bunch of new daily games added to my um, to my playlist. So yeah, so I've got a bunch of new games started. So I'll just go ahead and make some. Uh, usually E4 or D4. As you go for E4, if I see the opponent, that you know sometimes they'll give you two games of the same person. In the same color, I'll do e4 for one and d4 for the other. All right, still early on. Let's see. Let's try something different. Let's bring...
Yeah, let's bring this pawn forward. I know I'm blocking in my light squared bishop, but I'm thinking my light squared bishop is going to end up right over here on d7 anyway. This will give me a chance to bring my dark squared bishop out and get closer to castling sooner. And if I need to, if they bring their bishop down to g5, I can... Uh, oops. Once again, arrow issues. Yeah. And I wonder if it's because I'm not checked yet. Yeah, so if they do this, I'll uh, do that. <clears throat> okay, threaten the pawn, develop. All right, do I have a fork opportunity here? Looks like I might. <clears throat> so in this particular game, I already have a one pawn advantage. It looks like I can just do a push and fork their queen and knight. Their queen cannot go to any of these diagonals. Well, not take that back. <clears throat> Their queen can only go to these diagonals, and only c4. Well, I guess they can back up one too, right? <clears throat> but either way, the queen is going to want to avoid that pawn, which means I'll be able to take a knight with a pawn. Yeah. Cool. Okay. This one could be trouble, right? I'm actually, I've played this person before in other tournaments, and they are uh, higher rated than I am. And I do recall that, yeah, I think they've, if I've won any of the games that we've done together, it's probably the minority of them. <clears throat> I think they've certainly won more than I have. But they now have a triple attack on this pawn, and I've got it triple defended, so that part's okay. But I can see their queen is also going against my b7 pawn down here, so... I think I'm just going to have to raise my queen up. Here's the issue, though. I bring that queen up a piece, uh, a square. They're going to bring their knight in to e5 and scare me away. <coughs> so, <clears throat> instead... I'll just push this. Jeez, oh, Pete's. It's so annoying. So instead, I think I'm just going to push this B pawn up. Since so far, I have enough protection here on the D5 square. <clears throat> that may be the short term way to go. Okay, looks like we've already done some trading. That's right, on this one, did the uh, Queen's Gambit. Accepted. You know what? I don't typically do a Fianchetto of the Bishop, so I'm going to try that.
Hmm. Going to castle. If I castle short, that is going to put my king right on the same diagonal as this bishop that's just moved out. Let me move this pawn first. See if I can't discourage any movement onto a b4 and d4. Okay, so I do have more daily games, but you can see these others, I don't have to make a move for a couple days. I'm going to let those sit for a little bit longer. I'm going to play. A 10-minute game. Let's see. Okay. Opponent's moving quickly. And of course, so am I, apparently. All right, so next move, they're going to want to push this pawn out here to d5, really contest this center. I'm going to go and do an early castle. Okay. <clears throat> I don't want him to push that anymore. <clears throat> so I'm going to take. I'm actually okay if they want to take my knight. I'm all right with that. And I encourage it. I'll take with a pawn if they do. So I'll go ahead and pre-move that. <clears throat> Not much of a pre-mover, but I think that one's safe. Let's see if I can get their bishop out of the mix. Looks like we might have ourselves a pawn that's undefended. <coughs> hmm. I don't want to open that up, so I'm going to keep pushing my pawn. I'm going to keep this uh, C file kind of closed for now. But I'm happy to open up this one. That was ultimately my goal anyway. Okay, making a lot of fast moves. And obviously not thinking very well. Yeah, I knew I wanted to move that queen there. I didn't even comprehend that I was going to be checking their king. I'm so focused on this corner here. I'm not even looking at that long range. So a little bit careless for sure. <clears throat> but looks like it opened up a great fork opportunity for me, right? So it makes me look like a genius moving the queen there. Because now we've got this beautiful fork. Queen and king. All right. So obviously, yeah, that was a win, but I don't feel great about it just because these last two moves didn't really even cross my mind as a process. Let me do the game review, though. It's nice to get a win from time to time. and uh, <clears throat> But even better, I'm curious about what I could have done better. Okay, so upper 80s for accuracy. That's nice. However, it wasn't a very long game. And... I think it's probably easier to be accurate, or at least for me, it's easier to be accurate in the first 10 moves than it is in the last 10 moves. 
Um, overall, though, pretty flat game until, obviously, that fork opportunity at the very end. Okay, so where are we at here? Rook d1 was an inaccuracy, and the only reason I did that was because I wanted to put my rook on the same file as their queen. There was no other intelligent logic other than, eh, let me put my rook on the same file as their queen. So once again, I made that move without really looking at opportunities. I ignored an opportunity to threaten winning a pawn. So let's back this up. Retry. Okay. <clears throat> Opportunity to push my B pawn into B4. Guess. Mm, that could be it. Hmm. Let's see what happens. Doesn't s <clears throat> B4 is best. This creates a threat to win a pawn. See, I don't like these. Even if I make, even if I can find the best move, I don't like that I understand exactly why it's the best move. Let me hit the show moves. Okay. That doesn't get me up a pawn, but I guess it's just threatened winning a pawn. <clears throat> but I guess what it does do for me is it opens things up pretty nicely. My opponent's going to have a fork pretty soon. So I'll have to contend with that. Hmm. Okay. I ignored an opportunity to connect my rooks. Yes, I guess I am aware of that one. Um, getting the rooks together on the same rank, awesome. And that's ultimately what I would do by moving that queen up out of the way. Queen b2 is best. And also gives me opportunities to do that discover check on their king. Missed an opportunity to kick a knight. Mm. Well, I'm probably not rousting their knight on e7, so it must be the knight here on f5. Boy. You know, yeah, g4, push this pawn. The review engine has suggested these kinds of moves to me before, and I never really think to see them, but they do scare me a lot. Pushing these pawns that are in front of my king just to push away or threaten another piece that could really move away. I mean, their knight can go up here to h. <clears throat> yeah, to, um, what is that, h6? Or it can back up and, you know, we can just do a little exchange. So even if I did look at that move, I would think, oh, boy, is it worth it? Is it worth, you know, exposing my king down here without that pawn? And there we go. And there's the uh, the fork at the end. Now, let's see. How do you read this? So, I don't think that's a 2050 move, so I'm not exactly sure what that means. <clears throat> but I do like the fact that, yeah, after you guess at a couple of the moves that you suggest, they're saying, okay, maybe you started off at a 89%, but if you made the moves that you thought about, then you'd be up at the 95%, which would be friggin' awesome. Um, I think I've probably broken 90% accuracy on one game, maybe two, but that's very, very rare. Um, in fact, I was kind of pleased with the upper 80s, but again, that was a relatively short game. All right, well, not too shabby. Um, made, made a few daily moves, had a good outcome on a 10-minute uh, rapid with uh, plenty of time left for both of us. So thanks for hanging out with me, and uh, talk to you later.